Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, I thank you for the sweet spirit of God that's in this place tonight. I thank you, Father, for open heaven in this place. I thank you, Father, that the enemy has been pushed back and the angels of the Lord have come Amen. to stand guard Hallelujah. around this premises. Amen. And there is the glory of the Lord, and there is the very presence of Jesus in this place. We thank you, Father, for the honor to cultivate your presence. We ask you, Lord, that you would increase your manifest presence <laughs> in this place and in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We constrain you, Jesus, yes. to come. Yes. We constrain you, Jesus, yes. to come. Amen. We ask you, Lord, that you would come, that you would rest in this place. Father, we desire for you not to pass us by. Amen. Lord, don't go somewhere else to a group that's more hungry. Lord, we're hungry for you right here. And we yes. invite you, Jesus, yes. into the classroom, yes. Lord, that you can come and that you can have your way, Jesus. We constrain you. We've made a room for you, Lord. We created a chair for you to come and to rest. We ask you, Lord, that you would come off the I-90, down the 88, and come straight into your home right here at Refuge Ministries. Come in Jesus' yes, name. Lord. Come in Jesus' name. Amen. We ask you for hot coals of fire, Lord. Yes. Place it upon our hearts that our hearts would burn from within yes. at the sound of your voice. Yes. Hot coals of fire, Lord, upon our ears that we would have ears to hear. Yes. That we wouldn't give in to distractions of the enemy. But Lord, we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Lord, take hot coals of fire and place it upon my lips. That I would speak forth the word in season. Lord, that I wouldn't speak forth my own mind or my own ideas. That I wouldn't speak to impress. But Father, that you would speak forth your word. Lord, I give you the totality of my being. I yield my vessel over to you that you could use my body to speak forth your heart and your message, Lord. And most of all, Jesus, hide me behind your cross. I promise you the glory. My dependency, O oh God, is upon you. Oh, how I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Oh, how I need you, Jesus. Yes, I need you, yes, Lord. Need you oh, how I need you, Jesus. Yes, yes. I need you, Lord. Yes. Lord, I need you, Jesus. Yes, I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Oh, how I'm leaning upon my beloved. I need you, Jesus. 
Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, thank you. for all that you will do yes. and all that you will say. Amen. I acknowledge your presence in this place. Amen. Yes. Fill it up, Lord. Yes. Fill up this place. Yes. That we would all stand in awe yes. of you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And so my very first week, the Lord had me give my last message first. <laughs> and I thought that my last message would be one message, but it ended up being three messages. So it took the last message, which was three messages. So now tonight, we're going to hear the very first message that I was originally going to give. And I'm trusting my father that he's going to somehow put it all together. And that we're going to follow his agenda. So here we are in the introduction to the deeper life. 19-year-old Steve Porter sat, raised in church my entire life, but not really listening, not really having ears to hear, <clears throat> recognizing the anointing of God that was on my dad. I clearly could see it. And when my mom would prophesy or give a word, it was so anointed and it had a way of causing me to pay attention even at 10 years old 11 years old 15 years old I paid attention when the Spirit of God would move and I could always tell when the Holy Spirit would take over my dad's messages because suddenly he would light up <laughs> and there was this shifting that took place and I paid attention to that but as I got into <clears throat> deep into my teenage years I wasn't really paying very close attention to the messages the sermons my mind was on girls or my mind was on my job or on my car or whatever 16 through 18 year olds think about that's where my mind was but when I got to Pinecrest at 19 and I began to hear the message of the deeper life, mm -hmm. I had no idea how that message was going to profoundly change my life. Yes. It was like I had a life altering experience. I come to realize being now 53 years old tomorrow. Yay. Somebody reminded me today it's your birthday tomorrow. I said, oh, that's right. I've been so busy getting ready for the conference. I'm forgetting that it was my birthday. But I've heard probably over 100,000 sermons. Some of them very, very powerful. But there's a handful of messages out of all those messages that had a way of melting my very heart. I can remember sitting and hearing messages where the tears would fill my eyes and I was having an experience. I sensed spirit and life impartation inside of me. I realized it was not just a message. It was the word of the Lord and it was changing me and it was changing me fast and it was changing me drastically and I became so in love with what God was speaking through the deeper life message that after I graduated from Pinecrest I never again could go back to the way that I once was. And now, 30-something years after that, that message is still 
burning on the inside of me. I remember back in my late 20s, Diane and I were married. Our kids were real small. And I was working at a facility for folks with disabilities. Some people don't know that, but I worked for over 25 years in the field with disabilities. I managed group homes. I worked as a program manager, managing over 100 employees. And I could have really went all the way to the top with that, but I eventually had to make a choice. Do I want to be a professional program manager and run group homes, or do I want to be in ministry? But I loved that job, especially back then, because I was working in a small apartment with just two guys, young, young guys, and they would go to bed very, very early. And after all my cleaning was done and the laundry was folded and all the work that I had to do was done, I had free time. And most of the staff at that point of the night, it was a little bit late, we had a couple hours to go for the shift, is they would just kind of nestle into the couch and watch TV. But I had this book called Water Spouts of Glory by Wade Taylor. And I would pull out his book and I could only read just a little bit. And I was overcome by that deeper life message. I can remember going outside, opening the screen door in the living room and going outside and it was nighttime and I literally could feel the presence of God filling my heart. I would shake knowing that I had received an impartation and I received a dissatisfaction <coughs> for just normal Christianity. Yeah. Just being content with where I'm at. I knew through Pinecrest and I knew through my spiritual father and I knew through my own father and Walter Butler and the different ones that there was more available than just going to church on Sunday mornings. Yeah, amen. That, that, there, that there was a living relationship that I could have with my Jesus and there was a deeper life available. <clears throat> but it was up to me to pursue that deeper life. When we graduated Bible school, I can remember the faculty saying, Brother Taylor was one of them. He would say, now when you go back to your home churches, don't expect this open heaven. Don't become dissatisfied when you go out into other places that this isn't being taught. Yeah. And so I would go to different places and I could not find this message being taught anywhere and it was so life-changing to me that finally I realized I have to teach it. Because that 19-year-old carnal boy was transformed. I have to teach it. So I spent decades and decades and decades just pursuing that message. And it has so changed me that I want so desperately, more than anything else, for it to be imparted in this class. Amen. Amen. That the deeper life would be reestablished in New York State. Amen. Yes. That that message of the bride of Christ would become a movement that would change people. That they would get rid of apathy and they would get rid of lukewarmness and they would begin to pursue the bride. Our very first refuge gathering, which was over two years ago in Woolcott, we started this Saturday gathering, once a month Saturday gathering. And I still remember, I was shocked when I t told this story earlier, how the whole place was full of people. Ron and Lisa were there, I can remember, on that time. And I remember, actually, Sister Janae, who comes here on Sunday nights, walking up the center aisle of that church. And she was coming up to receive prayer. And instantly the Lord spoke to my heart in an inner audible voice. It wasn't audible, but inner, like it shook me. And he said, this will become a movement. 
this will become a movement. Amen. That the deeper life will become a movement. And that's why I hid away for decades in New York State. I didn't do much but write books and write articles and, and create literature and training materials and all of this stuff because I believe that the deeper life message will transform and change someone's life. But I warn you, once you grab a hold of the message with all of your heart, you can never go back yeah, to the right. way that you once were. That's true. So the deeper life, lesson one. What is the deeper life? Well, it's Christ-centered. Christ-centered. It's Holy Spirit-centered. And it's cross-centered. Cross-centered. If you were to listen to Hattie Hammond messages, you would hear very quickly about what it means to yield to the Spirit and to crucify the flesh. Cross-centered. Now, I have to be honest with you, this message is life-changing, but it's not as popular as some of the other messages because very few people want to hear about crucifying their flesh. That's right. yeah, that's right. yeah. that's true. But when you die to self, you then are reborn and you live in the Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In order to live, you must die. That's right. That's right. The deeper life message doesn't have shortcuts. It doesn't give away free <coughs> upgrades. The deeper life message isn't easy. You have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow your master. But as you learn as his bride to surrender everything, the totality of your being, over to the Lord, he will stand there with tears in his eyes that finally he found a vessel that says, yes to him. I surrender all is more than just a song. If you have a signs and a wonder conference, everyone wants to go and see the miracles. If you have a prophetic conference, everybody wants to go and get a prophetic word. But if you have a, a conference that deals with dying to self, <laughs> remember Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus rode on a donkey. Jesus washed feet. Jesus was nailed to a cross. Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb. The Lord is involved in humility. Humble things the Lord loves. And he loves the message of the deeper life. Because it's a message that says, Jesus, be glorified. Amen. Another term for the deeper life is the deeper walk with God. I remember my dad singing a song, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granted, Jesus is our plea. Daily walking <clears throat> close to thee. Let me just tell you that there is nothing more sweeter than a deeper walk with God. Who doesn't want that? Amen. Do you want a deeper walk with God? Yes. 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 You're placed on this planet. If you have 80 years, you have 80 years on this planet to establish and cultivate a deeper walk with God. So that when you stand before him, you will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Remember, faithfulness is not just outward. Faithfulness is also upward. We have 80 years. Hopefully, we have 80 years. Will we get it right or will we just waste our entire lives sitting and doing nothing? 
listening to tickling of the ears about free upgrades and how you're going to get everything you ever wanted and ignore the Jesus that's standing right there and says, follow me, my son, my daughter. I've called you to be my bride. I've called you to be my mature son. Oh, but Lord, it's hard. Pick up your cross and follow me because as you die to self, you will live. You will live. The Deeper Walk with God. I just put together a book called The Deeper Walk. Wade Taylor, I put a, a section in there by him, something that uh, has never existed before that I worked hard on. John Wright Follett, Hattie Hammond, Celie Kenny, Walter Butler, Madame Guyon, and a little thing by myself at the end of it. The Deeper walk with God. The deeper life is also known as the inner life. The inner life. There are a lot of ministries that focus on the gifts of the Spirit. Can someone prophesy? Can someone lay hands on the sick? Can demons be cast out? These are important things, and I will not belittle the gifts of the Spirit. They are important. But the deeper life believes not just in the gifts of the Spirit, but also believes in the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The inner life. I traveled for many, many, over a decade or longer. I traveled full time for many years, many places around the world. I traveled, and one thing I noticed as I traveled, some that were very anointed in the pulpit, were nasty to their wives, were mean to the waitress because they didn't get their you know, soup done just right, were rude to other people that gave people a piece of their mind all the time, but they could stand up there and be anointed, but they didn't have love, they didn't have joy, they certainly weren't humble. The deeper life speaks of the inner life, cultivating things that are so happy and so wonderful. And that is being a person of love, having joy and peace and long suffering and self-control. I'm really, 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 really excited. <laughs> Ron likes to make fun of me. When I get excited, because I already know what my next class is going to be in the fall. The Lord gave it to me in a download, and it was powerful. It was like a hurricane hit me. And I'm calling it Growing in Grace. And the whole nine weeks is going to be dedicated to cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. And what does it mean to have a beautiful loving spirit that you carry. It's important. There are some people that carry such a beautiful heart and beautiful spirit. It radiates from them. Hattie Hammond was one of those people. Every time I listen to it, the beauty of the Lord. I wrote a book on the beauty of the Lord. I'm going to go into that book on the beauty of the Lord. What does it mean to carry the beauty of the Lord? What does it mean to cultivate humility in ministry? What is it? it is one of the most important classes I think I've ever given. It's basically introduction to the deeper life part two, dealing with the inner life. I can't wait to teach it. Really? Um, you are excited. Really? The inner life. Boy. I gotta, I gotta hurry up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The deeper life answers the deepest longing of the human heart, which is to love and be loved, to touch the Father's heart. The deeper life is the Father's heart. It's ministering unto the Lord. See, that's why I gave you that message. It's learning to be a, a Mary. 
laying at his feet because she chosen the greatest. Make me of Bethany. I've been playing that song on my playlist. I blast that in my car and I have a little revival every time I play it. That's my heart. I want to fall every time I hear that song. That's good. Because that's that that's our heart here. That, it's like they wrote that song for Oasis Bible Training Center. Make us a Bethany, Lord. Let's be a place where you can dwell. The deeper life message will be what you care most about when you stand before the Lord. That's why I feel a mandate to teach it. Because when we take our last breath and we stand before the Lord, the most important thing at that moment, when you walk and you see God face to face, is do you have a deep, meaningful relationship with the Father? Yes, the gifts are important. But the Bible clearly talks about those who prophesied and those who did this. And he said, but I didn't even know you. Right. There are some people that have made an idol out of ministry. They use people for the ministry. They go out and do a bunch of things. They're like Martha's all the time doing, 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 doing. While Jesus is a stranger to them, they don't know. And when they stand before him one day, he might just say, I never knew you. Have you ever wondered why the Bible says, and I'll wipe every tear from your eye? What are the tears? I believe they're tears of those that knew that they should have walked close to the Lord, but they chose activity over relationship. This message of the deeper life could save you. It's so important. We stress it about cultivating a personal relationship with the Lord. Millions of times I've seen in my spirit my name being called and I stand before the Father. And I have a holy, holy fear and reverence and awe of the Father. And I want him to know that I have tried my best. I wasn't perfect. I made lots of mistakes. I took some detours and I've blown it a couple times in my life. But I want him to know, like David, that I was a man after God's own heart. I want him to know that I tried my best to minister unto him in my own feeble, weak ways because I'm just a human being. I, I tried to dry his tears. I had a relationship with him that was cultivated. It means something. It's, it's so important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are four general areas of the deeper life message. There's A, experiencing a deeper life with Christ through abiding. That's Christological. There's B, the fullness of the Holy Spirit available to all who hunger for it. It's pneumological. And there's this entering into the deeper life through the experience of the cross. That's soteriological. So here we see an experience in a deeper life with Christ through abiding. We're going to talk about in the next class, what does it mean to abide in the vine? John 15. There's this fullness of the Holy Spirit. Don't you want the fullness? I want to go beyond just the hands of God and I want to go into the fullness of the Spirit. And I never want to think that I've arrived and I've received all that I could possibly perceive. I remember this young hungry man went up to this wise, wise <coughs> man in the church. At least he thought he was wise. And he said, I'm so hungry for God. I want more. And the old man looked at the young man and said, well, are you saved? And he said, yes. Well, have you been baptized? Yes. Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Yes. And the old man looked at the young man and said, well, what more do you want? I assure you, there is more than just speaking in tongues. There's the fullness of the Spirit. I love saying that because it's anointed every time we say it. The fullness of the Spirit. I want the fullness of the Spirit. I want all that He can give me. 
Every day I want the fullness of the Spirit. There is this entering the deeper life through the experience of the cross. I talked about that. And there's this growing in maturity through the inner life. Christian maturity is so important and it's stressed in the deeper life because crowns are not given away as souvenirs. You must earn them, yeah. says John Wright Follett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't earn your salvation. Salvation is free. It's a free <laughs> gift. But you're not going to receive bountiful gifts in heaven if you were apathetic and lazy and never answered the knocks of God. That's right. Instead of hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you'll hear, well. <laughs> so there's this maturity, this spiritual maturity, and I would love to give about five messages on spiritual maturity. I will some other time. It could be a class. How much do you want to hear about spiritual maturity. Amen. It's very, very important. Part of spiritual maturity is growing up from the milk to the meat. If I showed you a 45-year-old man right now and he had a diaper on and I had a part of his whiskers to put in the bubba, <laughs> it wouldn't look right, would it? Yes. Wouldn't look right, brother. How many of you know that there are many people in church, not this one, of course, but other places, they've been at the same level spiritually their entire lives. They've never grown any. When somebody ticks them off at Walmart, out comes a Yeah. They watch the same trash that they've always watched on TV. But the Lord's called us into maturity, growing. We are to go from the milk to the meat. The deeper life is the meat. There very well could be many classes before you would even be ready to hear the first class on the deeper life. Yeah. I wouldn't place somebody who just got saved in the deeper life class. I'd put them into first principles class first, teaching them the basics. And that's wonderful, and I have a heart for that, and we're going to offer those classes. Because I want to see at Oasis new believers discipled as well. That's right. That's good. Yes. But how many people know that eventually we need to graduate from first principles yes. and be able to take the meat? Yes. Yeah. If our whole ministry is just milk, then we have a bunch of people that are sitting there starving to death. Because I wouldn't be satisfied if on Tuesday I said, Diane, I'm starving, and she handed me some milk. <laughs> Wednesday, Diane, I'm starving. She handed me some chocolate milk. The next day, it was raspberry milk, and then strawberry milk. After a while, I'm going to say, I want some meat. The deeper life is the meat. And if you don't have meat, you are going to starve, and there is a famish. Famine in the land. Spiritual famine. Amen. Because there's too many messages on how to be successful and five keys in order to have a better this and that. I remember once, while we were still at my dad's church, my sister and I, we asked if we could visit another church because we just wanted to visit it. See something different. We're PKs. They said, sure, go visit it. So we walked up the road from our house and visited. You know what the topic was that Sunday? Why you should buy Tupperware. Oh, wow. <laughs> the whole Sunday morning no. message was on Tupperware. Oh, my, wow. my sister and I ran back to my mom and my dad just as fast as even us as like 15, 16 year olds. Even we knew better than that that there was more to God than Tupperware. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Can you imagine dedicating a whole Sunday morning to Tupperware? Well, basic messages are good. But there's also people on other spiritual levels, and we should be going from kindergarten to first grade to second grade. There should be a spiritual growth yeah. that's Amen. taking place. Yeah. If there's not spiritual yes. growth, if everyone's the same, there's something wrong. Yeah. That's why I am asking God, Lord, hear my cry, set in Generation Z. Yeah. 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 That we would have young people too. That we would have young couples too. New believers, Lord. Let, I want to start a first principles class. Maybe that class is going to be taught by some of you that are sitting right here. You're not just coming along for the ride. We're all being prepared together for something. Yes. Something great. For something more than what we're doing. Amen. I see greatness in this room. I see world changers in this room. I see history makers in this room. I see people growing. I could give you testimonies of the growth, the spiritual growth that I have noticed in this room of different ones. I've seen you literally growing in God. It's been beautiful to watch. God is causing you online to spiritually grow level by level, spirit to spirit. We need to grow. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter two, verse two, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Hallelujah. Grow. It doesn't say, and newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word that they remain stagnant and babies forever. No. No. That they grow. Wow. We're about to see our little grandson Malachi. Wow. Our daughter sent us a video wow. how he was eating his first table food. Wow. He's almost walking. Wow. Wow. Last time I seen that little boy, he was in this little Bobby thing on the floor. He was in this little Bobby thing that would bounce around. And now he's eating table food. And my little granddaughter, she's running around and she has almost perfect uh, pronunciation of words. She's so smart. She's growing. We can't wait to get down there to see them soon. It's the same way in the spirit. We should be growing. Amen. That's I believe that's part of our call, and my dad would agree. Of yeah. Oasis, it's a Bible training center. <clears throat> I want to see an acceleration of spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. Yeah. And you know what? I'm at the finally at the place in my life that I say, Lord, rebuke me. Make me uncomfortable. There's anything in me that needs to change. And the Lord, as a loving, 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 Daddy God will whisper something I need to fix. So, thank you, Jesus. For who the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every man that he receives. Every son, every daughter. Thank you for the correction, for the scourging. I don't want to remain the same. I want to change. Lord, point out if there's anything inside of me that's stopping the growth. I want to grow. I don't want to be stagnant. I can remember, I'll be honest, I can remember around January, because everybody thinks about these things in January when it becomes a new year, thinking, you know what, I really didn't grow that much last year. No, I don't have time for that anymore. I don't have time for that. We're inching closer to the coming of the Lord. That's right. Amen. My audience with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is quickly approaching. Lord, let me make up for lost time and run after you with all my heart. Man, time goes by so fast. We should be growing from immaturity to maturity. That's the deeper life. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. For everyone that uses milk 
is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. For everyone that useth milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Hallelujah. I don't want to remain a babe. I don't want to be unskilled. I want to grow. The deeper life speaks about being a mature bride of Christ. Revelations chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. I often write about it. I often speak about it. I'm just going to briefly mention it. If you're interested in learning more about the Bride of Christ. I have three books on it, and I am not just suggesting books to sell books. I really want these books to change your life. They're part of, of learning. One of them is required reading, Draw Me, The Deep Cry of the Bride. The second is Christ's Golden Queen, a prophetic view of Psalms chapter 45. And the third is my most latest book called The Overcomers. There's a lot to be said about being that mature bride. And the deeper life stresses being a mature bride. Why? Because the Lord's not cruising the nursery for his bride. That's right. He wants a bride who's prepared and ready. Revelations 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. That means he's coming back for a bride who's prepared. This is the remnant bride. Often people will teach that the bride of Christ is everybody. I do not believe that. No, it's not. If you look at Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the ten virgins, five were foolish, five were wise. Never in the Bible, anywhere in the 66 books of the Bible, can you find that a virgin is ever a type of sinner. That's right. Matthew 25 is a prophetic view of 10 Christians, five foolish, five wise. The five foolish didn't have oil in their lamps. The five wise had oil in their lamps. The five foolish were caught unaware when Jesus came back. The five wise were ready. Oil is symbolic of anointing, the oil of intimacy. The five wise had the oil of intimacy in their lamps. This is your lamp. <clears throat> Through one-on-one, -on -one, pursuing the deeper life, the deeper walk in God, the inner life. You are filled to overflowing with oil running over. But if you decide that you're just going to like playhouse of God and not care about spiritual growth, you're still drinking milk. You may be caught unaware. Notice when you look at the the end of Matthew 25 in that parable, it doesn't say that they were sentenced to hell. Yeah. It says, I never knew you. I didn't have a personal relationship with you. <clears throat> so the deeper life stresses being a mature bride of Christ. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. We said, for everyone that useth milk is unskilled. So the mature bride has, re has become skilled because they went from just milk into the meat. Galatians chapter six, verse nine, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God. There's a groaning that's taking place right now in the spirit realm. For the sons, the mature sons of God to take their place. Not only are we a mature bride, but we're also a mature son. Sisters, you are a mature son. Brothers, you are a mature bride. If you pull out a coin, it's different sides of the same coin. Mature bride, mature son, same coin. Both of them are symbolic of someone who has followed after the deeper life. They are a wise virgin of Matthew chapter 25. They have graduated from the milk to the meat. They're walking the deeper walk. They have cultivated the inner life. Oh, that's good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. They've cultivated spiritual maturity over time. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I literally do not know how in the world I'm going to finish this in four more messages. Oh, Jesus. I have nine minutes. So stretch. Say, thank you, Lord. I have nine more minutes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me give you a principle right now. It's the principle that we as believers should transition to disciples. There is a difference between a believer and a disciple. A believer invites Jesus into their heart, confesses their sin, and becomes born again. Therefore, they are saved. Most believers do not want to go to hell, so they freely ask Jesus to save them. After all, who wants to go to hell? But there are some believers who stay at the, at the elementary beginning of their spiritual maturity. They are believers. We as believers should transition to being disciples. A disciple is a disciplined follower of God. A disciplined follower of God. We can have Jesus as our Savior, or we can have Jesus as our Lord. If he's not the Lord of all, he's not the Lord at all. Lord means ruler or master. So a believer has invited Jesus as Savior, but you have to make a conscious decision to make him Lord. Lord, you sit on the throne of my heart and you call the shots. When that person in front of me gets on my nerves, rather than point my finger and yell at them, I'm going to yield to the deeper life found in Christ. And I'm going to have patience when I have no patience. I'm not just going to give somebody a piece of my mind. I'm going to have a renewed mind. I'm praying for the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5. Yeah. Whatsoever things are pure. Think on these things. <clears throat> that is a disciple. Lord Jesus, make me a disciplined follower. A disciplined follower is a learner. A disciple wants to learn. Doesn't think they know it all. Knowledge puffeth up. <clears throat> but a, a bride is humble and realizes that they don't know it all. And when they do learn something, they give all praise and glory to God. There have been some people that have gravitated toward the deeper life and the message of the bride, and they had something called bride pride. I'm a bride. You are a daughter of Jerusalem. You're a carnal person. If you really allow the deeper life message inside of your heart, then you're also asking for your inner life to be transformed and you will have a humility. Hallelujah. Amen. A deeper life is obedient. Obey. If you love me, John 14, 15, obey my commandments. If you love me, this is the Lord speaking, obey. So sometimes you're not going to want to obey. But when you choose to obey, you have just crucified your flesh. That's what crucifying the flesh means. Crucifying the flesh is not easy. And anybody that says it's so easy to crucify the flesh, they've never crucified their flesh. Because your flesh is going to cry out to do things your way. But when Jesus is the Lord and he begins to whisper to you, Hallelujah. And number three, I said one, he's a learner. Two, they're obedient. And number three, they're an imitator of the teacher. I want to be an imitator of Jesus. How was Jesus when he walked the earth? I want to be like Jesus was. Not Jesus, but be like my sweet master. Be loving toward my enemies. 
loving those who curse me, refusing to fight, refusing to even defend myself. I've learned over the years, don't defend yourself. Let the Lord defend yourself. Jesus did not even open his mouth when he was faced with accusations. Accusations comes from one place, the accuser of the brethren. He is the accuser. So I don't have to open my mouth. I can let the Lord defend me. I gotta move along. Ooh, this is so hard. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The goal of being a disciple is to be like his teacher. Look at Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. This word perfect means mature. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you have to be perfect. There's no one perfect but the Lord. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. We need the grace of God. But this means mature. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is mature shall be as his master. So, Lord, let me be like you in Jesus' name. Let me be conformed into your very image. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may be the firstborn among his brethren. Often I pray, Lord, conform me into your image. That is the message of the deeper life. Conforming. It speaks of the conforming fire. You're inviting the conforming fire into your life. Lord, burn. I've often prayed that. Lord, burn that out of me. Burn that habit out of me. Or burn that mindset out of me. Burn that stronghold out of me. Burn the flesh out of me, Lord. Scrub me, Lord. Clean me. Purify me. Purify me with your fire. So he does. And it's not always easy. In Bible school, I've often found when I was there that the Lord used situation to cause me to grow. I remember there was this one young man in my very first year. Him and I did not get along. And he got real mad at me and almost threw me out the third floor fire escape. Oh, wow. If I would have went through that door, I would have tumbled to my death. He was very mad at me. But God was exposing something in his heart and in my heart. We didn't like each other. Fast forward to third year. That's the last year of Bible school. Through the grace of God, I still don't know how it happened, but I was chosen to be the class speaker, which is kind of like a valedictorian speech type of thing, but based on character and spiritual growth. And I had to stand up in front of all my classmates and give a special uh, message. And that young man who threw me, almost threw me out the door, stood there with tears in his eyes and clapped and clapped and clapped and clapped. Oh, wow. We had become friends. Wow. We realized something that the three years in Bible school that God allowed the fire to be turned up so that we would be conformed into the image of the Lord. Wow. I could tell you story after story. I didn't want to wash dishes. I hated dishes. <laughs> the Lord had me washing dishes at Pinecrest, pots after pot. A hundred people eating. And I had to wash those pots until I liked it. I can remember being switched to the uh, uh, the uh, major department, which is basically cleaning toilets and things. And I hated cleaning toilets until the Lord rebuked me and reminded me that he washed the disciples' feet. And so he burned that out of me, burned that pride. It was an arrogant mindset. I'm, I'm a man. I'm, I'm an American. I don't, I don't, all this stuff. So God will light you on fire on the inside to expose things so that you will become spiritually mature. So while you're in Bible school, you're all Bible school students, don't be surprised if the fire doesn't get turned up a little bit here and there. That's to expose things inside of you. And welcome the fire. Don't get upset about it. Don't be angry about it. Be excited. Yes! Hallelujah for the fire. I'm, I'm being conformed to the image of my Savior. I'm, 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 I'm growing in God. I'm not a baby. I'm not a 45-year-old with whiskers. <laughs> I'm growing. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going into the meat now. I'm, over, I'm, about, I'm at 
spam now. Eventually I'll get to the porterhouse steak. Thank you, Jesus. One more scripture verse. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is probably why my most important scripture verse on this message. Acts 2, 42. And if you miss any of these things that I've mentioned, I got good gospel news for you. It's going to be in your notes. Yeah. Don't forget to get your notes and print them out and put them in a folder. Yes. You can put holes inside of them and then stick them into like a binder if you like. Keep this forever. Amen. Go over your notes every week. And it says in Acts chapter 2 verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread in prayers. This is how the early church grew. Mm -hmm. How did they grow? Three things. Number one, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. What is the apostles' doctrine? The Bible, the word of God. If you want to spiritually grow, if you want to go deeper into the deeper life, you must study the Bible. Steve talked about meditating on the word. Madame Gagnon talks about praying the scriptures. And I illustrated that on a Sunday night. There's a message about nectar. I, I can't remember what I called it. Something like sweet nectar. I, I recommend that message. In fact, I'll, I'll place that in the notes where you can watch it. It's a whole message on that. It's so important about continuing steadfast in the word of God. Be steadfast. What does steadfast mean? It means don't give up. You're steadfast. You're, you, 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 if you're steadfast, you don't quit. Keep going. And going and going. God seeks disciples, not just converts. Remember that. Disciples must be steadfast and persevere. We take baby steps and we learn and we grow in our faith. And the way that we do that, number one, is through the apostles' doctrine, which is the word of God. Number two, fellowship. This is an important one. Why in the world does Refuge Ministries have hot dog machines downstairs? <laughs> Why do we advertise opportunities for people to get together and fellowship? Is it because Steve's creative with stuff like that? No. It's because a long time, long time ago I realized how important it is for brothers and sisters in the Lord to get together yes. and talk. Yes. Yes. We do not want strangers here. We want family. Amen. We want everyone that comes to refuge to feel like family. Yes. We want everyone to know that they're special and that they're loved. We want everyone to know that Diane and I appreciate every person that walks through that door and that we consider every person that comes through that door our family. And although I'm a very busy person, I still think and pray for every person in this place because you're family. And when you have a family atmosphere, it creates a unity. That's right. And when the church of God is unified, the devil can't stop it. That's right. Yes. And the Bible says that iron sharpeth iron. That's right. I had a best friend in Bible school who actually lived in Ohio and went to my dad's church. He passed away. His name was Dane Laird. And Dane and I used to get together. We were roommates even after Pinecrest. We had an apartment together. And I have yet to have a friend like him where we would sit for hours and revelate. It was the most, it was better than any primetime movie. We would sit there and revelate. Yeah. He would share a revelation, and I would share a revelation, and he would share a revelation. And it was iron sharpeth iron. Our fellowship was Christ-centered, and it was sweet. And I often picture Dane standing in heaven waiting for me, his friend. He died a very young death. And it was hard when he passed away. We were very close. My dad called him his other son. 
And I know one day when I go up to heaven, he is going to be standing in my welcome party. And Dane and I are going to revelate for all of eternity. <laughs> Hallelujah. New word for you tonight. Revelate. So there is power and fellowship and people getting together. And if I have to use hot dogs to bring people together, then so be it. Fellowship brings spiritual growth. Last one. I'm sorry. I just want to push this thing through one last time. And the third is, and they continue, steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. That's one. Fellowship two. The breaking of bread and prayers. Prayer Amen. brings spiritual growth. Yes, it does. Prayer makes the deeper life deeper. You want to grow into full maturity? Pray. Talk to God. And don't just say, God, I need this. I need that. We're trying to teach people through all these messages on intimacy on how to sit with your friend Jesus yes. and let him be the lover of your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. What a night this has been. Ooh. Last night, Father, was difficult with distractions, Lord, but I thank you that the enemy has been pushed back tonight. Right. Amen. Amen. I feel open heaven. In this place, yes. I feel yes. manifest presence yes. in this place. Yes. And Lord, I acknowledge you. I pray that your people yes. would never forget this message. Yes. That you would impart it deep inside of their hearts. Yes. And they would pursue a deeper life in Christ. The deeper walk with God. The inner life. And Father, yes. as it changed me yes. forever, I pray, oh God, let it change my dear brothers and sisters. Let it change my dear friends. Lord, I pray that you would impart this message yes. deep inside of hearts yes. that they would never again be content to wade in shallow waters but they would go into the deep. Deep cries out to deep, spirit to spirit. You are crying forth in our land for a bride that's willing to go deeper, a bride that's willing to crucify the flesh, a bride that's willing to become spiritually mature. The whole world is groaning. Nature is groaning for we, the mature sons of God, to come forth and take our rightful place. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that your power, anointing, glory, and presence would fill our hearts and fill the room in which my special friends that are watching online, Lord Jesus, fill the room with your presence. Lord, to overflowing, let them cultivate the sweetness of your spirit, even now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I acknowledge you, Lord, that you are doing that work. I'm just a man, but I thank you, Lord, that you are doing that which I cannot do. You are imparting spirit and life right now, and literally there's an impartation taking place inside of hearts all over. Thank you for that, Lord. Those, Lord, that are watching live, do it. And those that will find this video even years to come, do a fresh move and stirring of your spirit. Quicken them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.